The champ is here. We will definitely not shut up and dribble. The champ is here. I must be the greatest. The champ is here. I'm gonna continue to stand with the people. The champ is here. I will I not, not lose. lose. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with we. My name is EJ, and I got my man. Hey, he is the DB of the show, and we are Black in Sports, giving a voice to the culture that won't shut up and dribble. Here interviewing the best professionals in the game and in the boardroom, covering it all, laughing it all, while providing a platform to be heard. So, lady, let's play these bills. Uh, show sponsor today is Windermere agent Stacy Connor. Whatever your real estate needs, Stacy's here to help you reach your goals with confidence. Top real estate luxury agent and the director of sports and entertainment division here in Las Vegas. You can reach her at 702 741 5944 or Stacy at Win- Stacy Connor at windermere.com. All right, man. So we're going to jump right into it. Jump right to it. Jump right to it. This man is ready. He's ready to go. We want to welcome our guest. He's a Hoosier alumni, uh, director of NFL Flag. Let's give it up for Brandon Mosley. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. Yo, so. You know how we how we <laughs> this is this is that week, Miles, right? Like we've been having some technical difficulties. It's definitely a week. <laughs> it's been yeah. just like that kind of whole situation. So we're gonna let our um you know producer figure this stuff out and maybe call them or or, or figure what's out up? what's going on. Fellas, how you doing today? Oh, there you go. We hear you. We can't see you. I don't know if you got that um that Telly Riley internet we connection. Get it? We get it? There we, we go. Good. All right, man. So, uh, we just welcomed you in. So, thank you for being here, man, uh, making that time. I know it's a little bit of a time difference. So, um, how we like to start the show is a shoot your shot moment, man. So, this is just really where you went for it all, and you shot your shot, man. It could have been a win or loss. You could have fumbled. You could have got the rebound. But a shoot your shot when it was um, when you bet on yourself. Um, <laughs> shoot my shot. Absolutely. Uh, hey, well, first of all, I want to start off with it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, with you fine young gentlemen, uh, appreciate you having me on and and being blessed with the opportunity to spend time with uh, some some more young professionals out here in the world. Um, but uh, I don't have much to say. But you know, just uh, you know, happy to be here and, and you know, look forward to uh, having a good conversation with all y'all tonight. So give me a moment, a, a shoot your shot moment. A, a time, it could have been your career. It could have been females. <laughs> Give me a story about shooting like your said, shot. He said females plural on that, too. Shoot my shot. Um, I would say, you know, uh, uh, at the ch- on the football field, I would just be like, you know, when it's time for me to make plays. You know what I mean? I, w- I was always shooting my shot then. You know what I mean? Like, I was always out there. Well, he's calling your own number on some of them blitzes too, huh? I feel it. <laughs> hey, you know when I got when I got comfortable, had to get out there. You know, let coach know what, what was good. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. So, so B, uh, take me back to the start uh, of your love for for sports, the foundation. Take me back. Where did that start? Um, my love for sports started at an early age. Uh, I grew up, uh, you know heavily involved with sports my 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 dad he played basketball and uh football growing up um and i had an older brother that was always in sports that always encouraged me to uh you know play play with him and and you know compete with him all the time so i i grew i grew a a love for for sports at a really early age so was it was it football? I know you did a little bit of track, but what was what was the favorite sport growing up? Was it always football? Was it basketball? You mentioned basketball. What what, what was the the main sport? I guess uh, basketball and football. It was between those two, uh, but uh, obviously football. Football was the the main one for me. So Maryville, Indiana. Did I say that right? I don't want to disrespect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maryville, Indiana. So born and raised Maryville, Indiana, huh? Yes, sir. Hoosier. So, <laughs> Boy, <laughs> if, if, if people didn't pick that up, I mean, if, if you're listening just on traditional podcasts, he's decked out, but definitely who's your representative. But uh, so Maryville High School, right? So the home of Greg Popovich, right? One of you guys' illustrious alumni. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proud, proud alumni. 
So what was it like, you know, in, in your high school as far as, I mean, just being in a basketball city, right, and, and you choosing football, man, how was that, you know, um, choosing between those two loves? Well, it was, uh, it was, it was actually, it was actually pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, Maryville is like a program, like they, they have a feeder program starting from bitty basketball all the way to middle school into the high school. So like we, we bought into the system at a really early age. Um, so w once one sport was done, I'll be right into the next sport. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. It was like that all the way until we, I actually had to choose a sport, you know, right before college. So you was all everything on the football field. Two times. Hey, hey, Everything. I was trying to be like you, Miles. Oh, uh, uh, there you go. There you go. Nah, man, you you was everything, man. So, I mean, I know you were DB, but how did you settle on DB? Was that just by where they stick all the athletes, or was there another sport? I know you was a running back, all that kind of stuff. So tell me about that. Um, running back was, like, my main position. Um, but, like, you know, I love playing both sides of the football, uh, you know, football field. Um, but running back was like my number one position. That's what really got me noticed, um, you know, league wide or, you know, conference wide and nationwide. That's what really got me noticed and, you know, putting up stats, you know what I mean? But I just so happened to be good on the other side of the ball too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. A little <laughs> so that's defensive that player of the year type. Yeah. Good, right. Like just good, you know, back to back. <laughs> no, like a real, a real life athlete, like a two star man. So was there somebody. Growing up, I guess maybe in the in, in college or in the professional ranks that you pattern your game after. Uh, I would say um, Eugene Wilson. He was an older player from my high school. Um, he was a beast on the field. He played basketball. He started varsity as a freshman in basketball. He started varsity as a freshman in football at oh, my boy. high school. You know what I mean? Like he was a beast. He got he he went. He was a uh, went to Illinois University, became a uh, All American okay. cornerback. Wow! Got drafted to uh, the Patriots and won a Super Bowl with the Patriots mm -hmm. from Maryville High School. Eugene Wilson. So like, I always looked up to him. He was like, you know, at least like, shoot, like five, six, five years older than me. Okay. But like, I grew up watching him my whole like life because I, I like I said, Maryville has a a youth feeder program i grew up in that feeder program the same one he did yeah you know yeah I, I, and for and for our listeners that may not be familiar with indiana for the little time that i spent up there man i know it's they they treat their their youth sports and especially their high school sports it's like uniquely like really you the real deal so i know being a star in indiana in high school man how was that because you was the guy how, how what was that feeling like it was good. I mean, I was a social butterfly. <laughs> you know, so, like, it worked out because I always like, you know, meeting new friends and meeting new people that I probably would have never had a chance to meet if I didn't play sports, you know? So, how is that feeder system? Is it just, uh, is it all sports where, where they kind of have that pipeline and it starts from the youth and just goes up from there? Yes. Oh, wow. Baseball, soccer, basketball, football. So that's swimming. Just a... <laughs> I was in the swimming too. Shoot. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That? <laughs> that's news. I mean, but that was like young. That's when I was uh huh. Now you trying to backpedal off that one. <laughs> like I was like we had swim lessons at the high school every weekend. You know. So you said you you was uh, wasn't competing or were you competing? No, I was not competing. <laughs> I was not competing. But like I grew up in that in our you know swimming program. Right. It was. So, uh, today is National Recruiting Day. It's, it's, it's the early day for people to sign, and uh, we, we touched on you being a two-star athlete, and uh, we see your, 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 your setup of IU and your IU polo on right now, man. So, <laughs> tell me about how the recruiting process went for you, man. How, how did that go? What, what made IU the decision for you? Well, um, it was fun. Um, I was re getting recruited by a few different schools, um in in the big 10 and big 12 and uh but like the thing about iu both of my parents met at iu in college yeah so okay i grew up raised a indiana university fan like my whole life <laughs> so 
You know what I mean? So once uh pretty much like you know once iu offered they like shut everybody up now so <laughs> done deal like, i guess like, i was like you know we gotta be cool be cool y'all be cool <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, i still have time to visit other schools right you know? uh, but uh once that happened uh it was like all right guess we're going to iu but i loved it you know what i mean i grew up watching this school my whole life and uh nobody from my high school never you know made it there on a football scholarship so okay no that's dope so were you recruited by uh coach uh terry was it hoppener is that how you terry hebner 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 were uh, you recruited no, i wasn't recruited by terry hebner but i did play for terry hebner okay coach terry hebner uh i was recruited by jerry denardo oh okay jerry DiNardo for one year i registered that year and then uh play for coach hebner all right uh, I mean, it's crazy. Um, he was turning the program around. You know, it was just um, you know, showing the stats of like how um, just attendance was increasing and the the, the level of recruits. You know, he was keeping because a lot of times, like you said, you're recruited by another coach and you leave, right? Or or shit just gets really sticky <laughs> when you get a different coach. Um, and then you lose him as a coach, which is like not a traditional way you, you lose him. So how did the team kind of bounce back from losing him? And it was, uh, it was cancer, correct? Yes. Brain cancer. Brain cancer. That's, that's a tough deal. So how did the team bounce back? What was take us through like that adversity? Cause that's a different kind of thing to go through when you're, when you're building a program. Well, it was tough. Um, like it was just a tough time. Like me, because like we seen it from pretty much from start to finish, but not knowing what we were witnessing, you know uh -huh. what I mean? But after it all happened, we looked back and we started noticing things like, wow, you know, uh, but like, it was just a tough time, but we knew like we were on the verge of do make, doing something great here. Yeah, You know what I mean? So we knew, we knew what his plan was. Like he used to always say, have a plan, work the plan and plan for the unexpected. That's that's Coach Hebner saying right there. That's Probably. all he used to say. And that's what we stuck by. We knew what his plan was. We knew what he wanted us to do. And from there, like it got it brought us together, it brought our team closer, and like it touched us in a way that we never felt in our life as young men. You know what I mean? That's amazing. And uh but you know, like that year, that whole next year, like it was it was just a different vibe for us, like our whole team. We were our focus and mental was just on another level at that time. We're gonna we're gonna jump back into your playing career, but I you touched on something that I wanted to touch on is the the state of IU now, and, and particularly the football program. I know you're a big supporter, and Coach Allen there now is doing a great job. So, tell me what you think about you know reaching those new heights with IU right now, their football program. Man, you know I'm I'm excited, I'm ecstatic about where the pro, where the program's going. Um, Coach Allen is the man. Like he communicates with the alumni. Oh, that's big. Just that same way we're like, just like we're still on the team. You know what I mean? Like we have like meetings. You know what I mean? Quarterly meetings. You know, preseason meetings. You know what I mean? The, you know things like that with the oh. alumni. We get to have a one on one with Coach Allen. Like you know, and uh, another thing that he came and did was gave all of the coaches. I mean, not all of the all of the football player alumni, uh, free tickets to the game for life. You know wow. what I mean? That's that's what alumni want. We want to support our boys. That's you know big. what I mean? For life. You know yeah. what I mean? And he made sure that we we're gonna do that. And look, look, look at the atmosphere he brought. Yeah. You know what I mean? His, yeah. Like his 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 thing is love each other. Mm -hmm. Like you know, that's it. You just mm -hmm. gotta love the man next to you. You know yeah. what I mean? And work as hard as you can for the man next to you. That's it. You know? And man, that's like, fantastic. Like it's like where, where it's we going. huge. That's big. I mean, to, to, to start with that and include, because I think that's one of the issues that we have when we have a lot of guests here that, you know, are part of the UNLV program is that they just feel no connection. I mean, even when you have, you know, a, a person like Randall, you know, Randall Cunningham here in the community, and there's just no connection to his alumni base here. So that's that's a really big big step and it's kind of staying on that topic so you guys have the best well tied for the best record in the big 10 how do you feel about that ohio state decision Man. hey you know we want to win on the field you know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't look that's you know they 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 got us this year but look we just want to win on the field the decision was made right you can do about it we'll prove our game on the field 
Yeah. I, I love it, man. And, and, you know, and, and Coach Allen does a good job recruiting within the state, too. That's another thing that Big. we've talked on here about UNLV, about approving, uh, getting getting guys in the state here to stay. Um, so I know Coach Allen does that. So your playing career, man, uh, tell me about it, man. I, I know we've had we've had talks about your time meeting with up uh, with Des Bryant and things of that nature, man. So 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 give me some top moments for you on, on the football field there at IU. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I was probably, you know, uh, a late bloomer, you know, they would say like I played mainly, you know, special teams my first couple years, got in, you know what I mean? And then got more tick around my, you know, sophomore, junior year. And then, you know, really, you know, balled out, you know, my last year there too, as well, you know, but, uh, probably like, you know, I had some good games, you know, big hits, you know, made some plays, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, hey, I actually had a uh, ESPN number one play while I was out there. Okay. You know, my interception versus Penn State uh, was an ESPN. No, top ten. It was a top ten play, number two. It okay. Was number two. And I went, I went number one. I was number two. <laughs> <laughs> I was number two. I'm, you know uh, what I mean? Uh, uh, so who who did you pick off at Penn State? They were deep, uh, they were pretty good. Dale they were top Clark. ten at then. Dale was Clark. Mm. And they were top. They were a top ten program at that point, right? Uh they were ranked. I know, but I don't know if they were top ten. Well, speaking of video, man, I'm still looking up for uh, that defend the rock promo video you did, man. That like uh, <laughs> coach was real hype about it. Said that you you go all out on everything, right? So you know, touch on you know, it, it's good that you had that. But what brought that connection? And is that just that mentality that you carry through everything in life? Because that was one of the things when you know they re referenced that they were like, hey. He goes hard on being a player, being in school, and he Everything. went really hard in this video. But, you know, that's just the mentality that he brings, man. So where did you develop that, and where can we get that Defend the Rock promo video? Because I was searching everywhere for that dang thing. Oh, uh, man, it's on YouTube. It's uh, on YouTube okay. uh, somewhere. Um, but uh, I don't know. That's just how – I mean, that's just how I was raised, man. I was always, I was always raised to uh, go hard at everything I, I, I put my, you know – put myself into, you know what I mean? Um, I don't, I don't believe in quitting. Um, I always, I don't, and I also don't believe in, in losing. I do believe in lessons, learning lessons, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, I don't, I always try to look at how, you know, how a, a bad situation can be turned into a better situation. You know what I mean? And, Absolutely. And, you know, we, we're raised with like a soldier mentality once you, into a program like that you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. so, so uh, uh, that's awesome man all right so one of the standouts and I, I was thinking i was like well is he gonna say that this was gonna be a standout moment so you know you guys have some traditions and that's what i think i love about you know um established universities or tradition and during your time there you got the was it the old oaken bucket or what what, what, what what's the name of that uh what is that hey, uh, the old oaken bucket yeah that one. that's like one of the that <laughs> That is the the game of the year every year. You know, it's <laughs> okay. like the battle of you know two of the best schools in in the state of in Indiana. State. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? For bragging rights, a whole year, like <laughs> like it is real. Like it is real. Conversation, like at all times in the state of Indiana, you got if you have a Purdue person and a IU person, no matter what game is going on, if there's an IU any t sport. Like it's automatically a competition in the room, you know That's what I mean? Hilarious. Now y'all have a lot of rivals too. Now y'all have more rivalry games in a little bit. So <laughs> uh, what's the? So is that the biggest one out of all of the rivalries that I, I think? Because you guys have one with Kentucky and another and another team. But is that the rival game? That's the rival game. <laughs> he said the. <laughs> he put the on there. Okay. Is it? Is it always? It's always the last game of the season, right? You said what? Is it always the last game of the season? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the one. That is the one. The one. The and this is a totally different sport. It's basketball, but uh -huh. I I don't know what you what you call that. But it was always that banker's life, and it was IU Purdue. Crossroads. Yeah, it's Butler and Notre Dame. Man, oh, they go hard on that one, huh? That that goes hard, man. Okay. That's that's a that's a good little I don't know quad or whatever it is, but uh -huh. it's a good little it's a dope thing. And see, that's the thing that. Hey. You, oh, go ahead. You don't. You realize during a tournament like that that there are four legit 
NCAA contending <laughs> basketball colleges in yeah. the state of Indiana. Right there. Like, this is true basketball state. Basketball is played in Indiana, y'all. <laughs> Bro, so I got to tell this story right quick. So when I first got my job there at, in, in Indiana, I didn't know anybody. So the first weekend I was there, I got there on a Friday, and I was there by myself. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> when I got there, it was the state championship for basketball weekend. Oh, and I went to Bankers Likes. I live right across the street. Right. And I thought the Pacers was playing. There was <laughs> it's the most it's literally the most people I've seen at a high school basketball game ever. Well, it, that makes sense. It had to be stacked. I'm talking about to, to the brim. <laughs> like I could not yeah. believe where I was at. Man, yeah. So uh, let's transition. I mean, while we're there. So, you know, in the in the game, we want to talk about your career. So you're the director of NFL flag for what is it? RCX. Yes, reigning champs experiences. Yes. Yeah. So, just tell us a little bit about that role and and um, you know what you do in that role. Uh, so you know it's it's blessed. I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be the director of the NFL flag football program. Um, uh, mm -hmm. my my main responsibility is to uh, help kids all over the country between the ages you know four to seventeen to have a chance uh, to play football. Um, and learn the game of football through a non-contact sport like flag football. Oh, um, you know, we've been around going on, you know, 25 years next year uh, as a NFL flag program. And, you know, we have constantly been evolving. Um, we're close to, you know, a half a million kids participating in the game of uh, flag football. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are expanding internationally into – at least, you know, three or more countries right now, wow. you know, different countries right now. So, uh, I mean, it's like, that's, that's, that's like my, my main responsibility responsibility is to help grow the game of flag football, NFL flag football across the country and internationally. Well, yeah, I'm shameless plug here. We, we, we just did a show, EJ and I talking about Steph Curry and he giving back to different communities with his new brand. And I know I know that you give back to communities that may have, you know, less fortunate individuals. Um, you're really, really good with building relationships with them. So what's what's kind of your strategies? Or maybe not your strategies, but how important is that to you to get young kids that are in places that they may not be able to, you know, afford other opportunities to play? How important is that to you? It's very important because, like, I didn't grow up, you know, with everything that I ever wanted. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, both my parents were teachers, so I got to, you know, experience a lot at an early age, you know, and I mean, I got to understand that, hey, we're not rich, but we're not poor, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we still need help to, you know, for me to be able to go play this sport or afford to go buy those cleats. Or, you know, be able to afford a full uniform for, right. to go play tackle mm -hmm. when, you know, that full uniform would be, you know, would cost 150 or more dollars right. when I can, you know, present to you a, a, a cheaper option and a quality product you know, and a unique opportunity, right? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So. How has it been or what are the challenges you face, you know, during COVID time, right? Like, it, is it even harder? Is the program on pause? Just what, what were some of the challenges you face? Uh, I mean, it's tough. It was tough. You know, we are, we, we have been experiencing a world pandemic and, you know, just like everybody else in the country, like we have been, you know, affected too as well. But like, you know, through this time, we've been getting stronger. You know what I mean? We've been getting stronger. We've been get, getting better and r really working on uh, what more ways on how we can help our, you know, leagues through these times as well, too. So, uh, I mean, you know, we're getting through it. And it has to be challenging, right? Because each state is different. And then with your league to be touching, you know, yeah. places in different states, you know, that that has to be just an additional challenge. Yep. Yep. But we're getting through it. We're That's getting awesome. Through it and, you know, doing the best we can to make sure we provide everything we need for, I mean, our league's need. Right. The game of flag football in a broader sense, man, We about half of our listens, listeners are women. Um, and I know there's unique opportunities that the game of flag football is providing for young ladies 
um, that are playing, you know, young and, and NFL flag from five to, you know, 14. And even here in Nevada, we have, uh, it's a varsity sport, girls flag football. So, and now the flag league. Yeah. yeah and now there's going to be, uh, you can have opportunity to get a college scholarship to play flag football. Man. Yeah. So talk about the evolution of the game of flag football, particularly amongst the young ladies. I mean, it has grown immensely and like our like we have to let the world know how how much like how big this really is. And we just we're just happy to be a part of it and and we're looking to grow the game all across the country and the world. You know what I mean? Because now women can earn a scholarship to go That's to dope. college. That's to dope. play football to play too. Football. Now. You know what I mean? So like it's a blessing. Now, does that count as a Title IX kind of um, what activity or, or whatever since they're giving scholarships for it? Yeah? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So not your first time around the, the flag football scene. I mean, you were with flag football before in your career, right, but just at a different organization. What were uh, some of the similarities and, in, in like, what was your title in, uh, that you did there? Um. At my previous organization, um, at U- I was with at, at USA Football. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was the NFL flag sales manager. Um, since then, um, reigning champs experiences, we took over the program January 1, and I made the transfer over and became the director of the program. So I've been with the program going on my sixth year. Um, so I pretty much just evolved with the program. That's fantastic, and, man. Uh, you know, and just blessed to continue to be here and, you know, help more kids play, you know, flag football all over the country. You said it evolved with the program. Um, since you've been at there for, for a long time, I know you've seen, you know, the evolution and the growth as we just kind of touched on. But where, where are some of the future that you see uh, with NFL flag or just a game of flag football in general? Um, I see I see the future of this game spreading into more countries and more internationally like international play like that's going to be like flag football is going to be the number one sport in america coming soon Mm -hmm. and soon enough we should we might even be able to see this in the olympics Olympics. so Mm -hmm. this is uh this is a pretty big deal shit break dances i'm about to say let's get that before somebody (laughs) try to break dance i don't i I mean 2024 it's happening break dancing is in the olympics so (laughs) we- <laughs> oh my gosh uh, in, in paris break dancing so um i would rather see flag football in, in the olympics yeah. as a yeah. real sport and a competition that people can dress instead of degrading our culture yeah, once before, again before, before we see an extra from coming to america <laughs> get a gold medal <laughs> <sighs> so all right now during your work career you know uh we talk about this a lot and it's it's a real thing but um, they kept calling you. You took a brief stint to go back and play football. Um, how was that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, I did it as well. You know, Lima Warriors, I had to go ahead and do that, you know, because I had good insurance at the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, you go to your little 40-hour-a-week job, you still try to chase that dream, man. So what brought on uh, going back and playing for the um, – was it the Bloomingdale Ingle, uh edge when you played or was it the uh the original Bloomington edge, Bloomington yes. edge yep it was the Bloomington edge in the IFL in the IFL uh, yes um so when I first had got out of college uh-huh. you know I didn't get drafted you know I worked out you know for a few teams at, at our pro day um and uh you know unfortunately I just didn't get signed um I had you know I had an option to go to an arena arena team that first year out but I had a better option to make more money as a, <laughs> uh, as a tour manager, uh, you know what I mean, to travel the country and promote, you know, a major product and, you know, just be myself. No, that's so dope. I was like, nope, going to do that. Um, so one year went by, mm-hmm. loved it, and I know I wouldn't have made that much money, you know, in arena. In arena. But I was like, all right. <laughs> Another year went around, Uh you know, and now I was like, all right, if I don't go right now, it's now or never, and I would hate it. So, um, you know, made a few calls and, and, you know, just seeing if, uh, if I, you know, I was still able to, you know, uh, you know, get out there and, you know, a couple, couple scouts, you know, can't call me back and, you know, 
made it happen. With a, uh, with a uh, trial with a team and went and got in and made a team. <laughs> so tell me about that experience, man. I know two years off, it's, it's a while. Oh, 20, it, 24 months is a while. You I, feel it. I feel it. Yeah, <laughs> I can feel it now. I'm thinking about that. My little experience. So how was that experience for you then, man? It was good. I mean, two months. I mean, two years off. I mean, I was still working out. We just wasn't competing. You right, know what yeah. I mean? But like kids do it now. Like they, you know, get hurt for a season. That's like true. same thing. But like the workout mentality is still built into you. So it's it's like it don't stop. Like I'm I might be working, but I'm still going to the gym. You know what I mean? Eating right, working. You know what I mean? And you know, just trying to do the right thing so I can you know stay ready. You know. So you spoke on, and I did have some questions. You did, uh, Marketing Works was the, the company that you toured or you traveled with? Yes, Marketing Works. Yeah, so what is it? You said you were on tour doing, like, product tours. Like, what was, like, some of the brands that you were working with? Is that what you were doing? Uh, uh, Promoting right brands? Wireless oh, the nice. One. Okay. Um, you know, the IRL, uh, IndyCar tour. Like, I used to travel to a lot of those events. Um we used to go to NBA games, NFL games, all the every everything that Verizon would sponsor, I would would go to festivals. You know what I mean? Right. And promote all of their new products, and I'll be in one city one week, another city <laughs> a next the next week for like forty four weeks straight. Nah, that's bomb. That's a and what did you learn from that, man? Like, um, how I guess how did you get into that, right? Because that's a that's a definite different trait than where you are right now. But I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure you learned a lot of things, and more importantly, made a lot of great networking and connections doing that. I just learned how to communicate with a lot more people better. You know what I mean? And I learned how to travel the country and actually and like live and enjoy and explore the world you know what i mean with a group of friends that were my co-workers that's awesome how many people on the team so you said there's group three people it was like a three three person team oh yeah i was like the three amigos doing everything right hitting up everything just living life that's yeah. a it's not a bad gig to start out with <laughs> i know what from the football field did you apply to that gig well you know <laughs> My, my my personality and you know my just um and, and tenacity about uh about the program you know what i mean just just out there you know like everything you know what i mean i was just being myself <laughs> that's that was it like that's like um, that's why they wanted me like I, we out here I, you said we out here. here here it comes there so it here, here, right. be, here go mosley right so <laughs> i'm about to get a little bit of mosley out here let's do so it my dad would be pissed if i didn't ask you this man about uh pleasure man yeah i know you a dog so uh how did that <laughs> tell me about... <laughs> there yeah, we go he came in all polished and buttoned up you know what i'm saying because i was gonna say man did you pour you up a little something you know what i'm saying before you did this interview because like he's all polished up but yeah man nah, he, he's gonna he's gonna enter that uh ulterior <laughs> yeah i know them gold boots is not too far away from me they're not they are not hey tell dad i said root to the cube <laughs> He listening. He know. Uh -huh. He over there barking somewhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you? Oh, there, see, there, there, see, there here we go. go. Here we go. Here go Mosley. Yeah. Hey man, just keep all your clothes on, man. We this is. I mean, hey. even though we we are rated, you know, X rated, we 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 still need to try to keep it a family show. So how did you choose that organization? Um, you know, they had a lot more role models that I uh seen myself in you know what i mean and i seen how they led in the community and you know it was just something i was just more attracted to um and the people more so you know what i mean yeah. and the history b behind that organization um i i grew up uh my mother was an aka so i grew up around you know <clears throat> the greek life as a child too as you know at an early age so nice i got to see how you know you know young men carried themselves at an early age <laughs> okay okay <laughs> i love it i love it uh that's good stuff all right um oh one more quick thing just you know as you have traveled but you know your mainstays have been uh indiana and chicago what has been like the difference in you know your career or working or work-life balance in you know those two cities or not much i mean just 
you know, from the flag or from, you know, any other perspective? Um, well, I mean, it's, I've, I mean, Indianapolis and Chicago is our two great cities. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like, I traveled for two years straight. So I lived on the road, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Traveling in between cities and, you know, moving in between cities. It wasn't really too much of a, you know, Big shock deal. for me. But Chicago is way bigger than, you know, <laughs> Indianapolis. But I've worked, Fact, ba- I've worked out of Indianapolis. Got you. Got you. All right. So we're about to jump into these quick hits. Um, quick hits are sponsored by Scotch Porter. Uh, it's self-care season, the perfect gift. Scotch Porter promised to provide you healthier, multi-purpose beard, hair, and face care products. They're here offering highly effective and easy to use. And the rest, they say, is up to you. Stay fresh and go to Black and Sports with special offers and discount links. Hit them. Uh, B, we're, uh, the first time, if ever, that you were starstruck. Uh. At the Genuine concert when I was in like eighth man, grade, Casey, it was Casey on, and man. JoJo and Genuine. <laughs> hold on, <Got> to see them. <laughs> I was wait like, oh. a minute, <laughs> come on, like come on, really, like that's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I say, when I say, like it was pure pandemonium. You should have <laughs> me witnessing that type of type of you know concert at her. In middle school, like it was dope. I was like, look at all the love. Like they were rocking out. That's hilarious. I would have never thought that in a million years. That's funny. Okay, though. There it is. So genuine. All right. We're gonna get you a genuine's greatest hits for you for your Christmas. No, no, no. (laughs) The wood or uh loving basketball. Loving basketball. Said Jesus. Uh, <laughs> that was obviously the wrong answer. <laughs> That's just my, I shouldn't be throwing my opinion in it. Uh, what? Shout out to your favorite teammate. Hey, shout out to my boy um, Jerry Williams, my <laughs> frat brother, my dog. Uh, was in the battle in the trenches with me all day long out in the field. Shout out to my boy Jerry. Also went to the same high school, Maryville. We out here. Jerry Swole, man. Uh, uh, a, a, a guy that you played, your toughest opponent, we mentioned somebody, but a toughest opponent that you had, who was it? Mm, that was just a dog. Opponent. That was just a dog on the field. Uh, I'd probably say, I mean, <clears throat> let's see. I don't know, man. You know, I mean, they was all right. They was all right out there. <laughs> Some things are high, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say, I don't know, you know, I would like to say probably, you know, um, one of my, actually one of, you know, one of my, one of my teammates that, and that I played against in college, James Hardy, like, mm. he was a dog, mm. like, you know what I mean? I can't, I don't, I don't really, you know what I mean? I couldn't say too many against the other teams, really, because I felt like, <laughs> I was we was out there dogging, you know what I mean? <laughs> there falling, dog. I think the hardest person I played again was actually on my team, James oh, Hardy. Okay, receiver. okay, receiver. He is nice. All right, um, it's the it's the holiday season, so give me your uh, favorite holiday movie. Uh, Home Alone. What is there? We go. The first one, or is it oh, definitely the first one, or is it the second one? Definitely the first one. Yeah, that, no, no doubt. Sec- <laughs> we we, we had so somebody much. on here that said the second one was better than the first one, and that's a little, <laughs> that's a little disrespectful. Oh, Home Alone. That's, that's too funny. Okay, so the craziest thing that somebody you know tagged you or whatever, somebody posted that you on on social media or that you've done on social media. The craziest thing that you've seen on social media that involved you. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even know. <laughs> well, see, we're talking to you know somebody in the Omega, so his his level of what crazy is 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 really heightened. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, it, it goes to another level. I get one. Who is someone that busts your ass on the field? Right. So you know you go through you know those those years and those practices, and sometimes maybe you were you know coming out freshman trying to rock someone or some someone trying to make a name. So who busts your ass on the field? Oh man, um, my freshman year, right? Uh-huh. 
you know, I was, you know, I read shirt that year. So, you know, <laughs> we were doing, we was like, we was, we was going against the ones a lot. Yep. So you can't hit a one on our, you know, on our top, on our, on our team. You know what I mean? Our active roster, right? I'm so like Chris Thomas, Chris Thomas, man, <laughs> running back. Okay. Running back. He, uh, he, uh, he came around the corner on like a sweep. Man, you know, it's like a Thursday practice. Thursday oh. practice. And I'm like, hey, you know, we, I'm just going to try to set up. I can't really hit you. <laughs> can't really hit you. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, so, like, all I know, all I know, I, I, I was right here. <laughs> I was right here, ready to set up because, like, look, I know I can't be just trying to tackle you up high. He was six. 6'3", 230, <laughs> running back. <laughs> and I'm like, hold up. Hold up. You know what I mean? Right. I'm trying to set up. He ran right through me. Lowered his shoulder, ran right through me full speed. I was like, coach, now you know that was <laughs> we, ain't, I, we ain't going 100% right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll never forget that play. But, like, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> as a young one in college, those type of things happen. Oh no! <laughs> Give me your top five uh, IU football Chris players. Chris Taylor, my bad. Chris Taylor. Okay, give me your top five IU football players. If if you were to rank a top five, top five. <clears throat> Let's see. I would do uh, Antoine Randall number one. Yep. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Uh huh. Anthony Thomas. Anthony Thomas number one. Okay. Like our top running back ever, Antoine Randall. Got to. Um, <laughs> after that, I would have to go with you know you gotta go with Super Bowl champs. After that, Tracy Porter. Tracy Porter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gotta go with Super Bowl champs. Then you gotta go with. Oh man, you know we got a couple now. <laughs> we got a couple now, but uh. Tandon Doss was a dog out there. He's Super Bowl champ, too. Mm-hmm. Um, man, who else? Who else out there? Um, man, it's a tough one for that. It's tough for, right for now. That, for that fifth spot? I, I would say Kellen Lewis and Kellen Lewis. Okay. I can't forget about Kellen Lewis because he took us there. He took us every, like all the way to our, our bowl game. Yeah. There you go. That's legit. All right, man. So. We're going to jump into the winner's circle, and this is, you know, your platform where you get to kind of talk about what you got going on. The, um, the winner's circle is powered by Nevada Grow, um, providing the right data, providing the right decisions, and facilitating the right connections. Nevada Grow helps small businesses grow here in Nevada. Uh, Kevin Rayford is uh, the leader of that program and is doing great things here uh, in the city. So um, one of the things that you wanted to talk about, um, and, you know, I got a chance to read up on it, which is amazing, amazing. And um, it's the foundation that you're working with, which you're really close friends. So I would like for you to start off with the story so our listeners understand, um, you know, what he meant to you and kind of what happened. And then we'll get into, like, the foundation itself. So um, Chris Beatty, um, uh, one of my uh, older college teammates, I met him actually on my official visit at Indiana University. Wow. Um, like, you know, we, you know, we, I met him on my official visit and we've been best friends since, you know, <laughs> and that was back in like 2004. So like, you know, he, you know, he was, it was that type of, you know, uh, camaraderie, you know what I mean? And, and love that, you know, we had amongst, you know, our, you know, teammates. You right. Know? So, but, um, just, uh, back in May, you know, when, um, the, the riots were happening all over the world. During the social uh, unrest and the social kind of justice yeah, movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, on May 30th, which was actually my birthday, the same day on my birthday, um, he was, you know, tragically killed uh, in a violent, you know, in a random act of violence. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, since that time, you know, we've just been, you know, searching for justice and, you uh, you know, just trying to do something in his honor to, you know, continue to let his uh, spirit live on and his, you know, legacy live on. Wow. And, uh, you know, a group of, uh, you know, a group of close friends, 
uh, came up with, you know, the idea to create the foundation. Close friends and family came up with the idea to create the foundation to, uh, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's what, uh, you know, we're going to do. We're going to try to help um, kids. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So, you know, with his foundation, what is the focus, right? Because, you know there's just so much about him reading about him. Like it was like after reading so much, I was like, damn, that's just a good brother. And it's so sad good that we've dude. lost him, you know, from um, the stuff that he's done in the community and then how he's connected to IU and the, just the, the entrepreneurial to the, even the fun factor, right? Like when everybody mm -hmm. came in town, he had you guys set up properly, man. So what is the kind of um, um, like the goal of the foundation? Like, so I know you started with kids, but overall, what's the, the mission so uh the mission is to uh, you know chris was a walk-on at indian university oh okay um, and uh the goal is to earn a scholar is to help kids earn a scholarship provide a scholarship to a walk-on at indian university and uh a kid who wants to play uh, football and go to cathedral uh cathedral high school which is the high school that he went to oh, okay so in cathedrals in the city of Indy, right? Yeah. It's a it's a it's a private okay. school there. It's, it's a private school. Okay, that helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. And also, you know, just help find way find ways to help, you know, uh at risk kids in the, the uh Indianapolis uh community. That's beautiful, man. That's and, and you share you share that same selfless um I guess maybe that gravitated to to Chris initially because you're 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 a selfless guy. Uh it's not selfless a selfless guy um does, don't really meet strangers really open and happy you know with everybody so um how i, I guess you're kind of carrying his legacy on with that man and, and do you kind of wear that with pride yes of course um you know got to man you know so i mean he like <clears throat> his name was his was his currency Dang. you know what i mean that's mm -hmm. that's blessed so i see you rocking the hat and, and, you know, I definitely saw that you got the foundation. I think that's a dope logo and everything with the foundation. What's like the launch date, you know, just so because, like I said, we have this the, the winner circle as a platform to promote and to get the message out there and, and support you. So what's the like tentative launch date and, you know, how can people support or help the cause? Uh, there's no uh, uh, tentative launch date as of right now. Things are still, you know, uh, getting worked on um, w amongst uh, the family members. Right. Um, so we're just, uh, you know, waiting on them. And then whenever they're ready, they'll let us know. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, they just really found justice yeah. like the last recently, and recently um, because the whole incident went down. And, um, you know, you guys have been, you know, diligent i guess this is where you uh use your criminal justice degree right because <laughs> you you didn't you didn't sleep man you were out there just kind of letting that spirit guide you and, and and helping this any way that you can you know find you know the people that caused this injustice yeah man um i mean <clears throat> i know it's, it's tough it's, man uh it's tough, man. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I mean, when, when something like that happened, you just, it's unexpected, but you know, you just want to do everything you can to try to, you know, not let this happen to somebody else. You know what I mean? Um, but like, hopefully, you know, whoever, you know, came forward and, or, you know, whoever helped, you know, provide, you know, the information you know, or information, right. you know what I mean? No, um, you know, I'm just happy for them. Like, you know, what I mean, glad that somebody had it in their heart to, you know what I mean, do the right thing. Well, it, it's great, man. It's a testament to you, his family, um, sure. to, to, to kind of continue to push his legacy. Um, like I said, just reading about him, like he was a it was a bright light for our community. Um, and, and it seems like he did whatever he could to help others. So um, congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, you know, not that we, I want to jump into your other thing because you kind of follow in his footsteps because he had his hands and in, in many things. He had a very uh, strong entrepreneurial spirit, spirit, excuse me. So um, you sharing that. So you actually are um, a real estate broker. So tell me how you got into that and, and tell me a little bit about that. Yes, I'm a, a managing broker. Um, 
for uh, my independent brokerage, uh, Mosley Real Estate Agency, out here uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, you know, it was something that uh, that I was always interested in at an early age. Um, my uh, my my parents uh, had built a house, and I was always interested in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The whole process and everything. Okay. So that's where it really sparked my interest. But uh, <clears throat> uh, like after college, a lot of our teammates was you know going pro, buying houses spending a lot of money and then we were realizing like man this person just got paid a lot of money just because they did the transaction <laughs> hold up hold up let me help you with that <laughs> <laughs> you know but like i mean it's something that it's like our friends that's spending the money so why not be the one 100%. to connect myself to the athletic community, to the, you know, real estate world, teach them how to, you know, have real estate, you know, be their second income. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So investing and all that good stuff. And that's great, yeah. man. That's really great. Cause we need to do more of that. Um, because land and real estate is definitely the, one of the strongest tools, um, for, you know, financial independence here in America that is, you know, so, um, like I always go back to the, uh, mcdonald's um thing if you've never seen that movie it's not about those mcdonald's it's about the land so that's awesome that you're doing that and, and educating and also uh being a conduit for um our community yeah follow my um instagram mosley real estate agency uh you know i, I always uh try to post some updates about some projects or you know deals that i'm working nice so do you do any investment club stuff um, you know, I, I follow, you know, my, one of my good friends, uh, the master investor, Ian Dunlap, you know, he's been doing really well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm definitely interested in always, you know, learning about, you know, stocks and stuff. Cool. All right, man. So we're, we're, we're getting close to the end, man. Um, this is where, what we like to call the assist. Oh, and by the way, we will put all of that stuff in the show notes. So if you want to follow him on that, that will be in the show notes as well. Um, but this section is called the assist. This is where you get to put your coaching hat on. All right. You get to give a words to live by, right? Maybe it's a philosophy. Maybe it's a quote that's, you know, really speaks to you. Um, but just maybe something you would tell your younger self or the audience. So give us a quote or words to live by go. Um, be fearless, um, and never give up and, um, always, uh, give it your all, no matter what, um, you know, commit to it and trust that it will work itself out. And, you know, as long as you live by that, you know, you'll be okay. You know what I mean? God will never put you through something that, you know, you can't handle. That part, man. I love it. I love it, bro. Be fearless. And you had to be fearless, boy. You came in up, coming up, you know, playing safety, rolling up on these big dudes. <laughs> you already know. Hey, when I was a, uh, you know, when I was getting, as soon as, like, my freshman year, as soon as I got there, uh-huh. I received all of Bob Sanders' uh, game film from Iowa. Mm-hmm. Oh, all boy. The, I, like, all the, I, his uh, senior year games. I was like, all right, bet. Let's go. So you had a headache yeah. a lot of practice <laughs> You got the Bob Sanders film. You because <laughs> that boy he comes up God, in lady. Rex yeah. shop. <laughs> Shout out to Bob. Shout out to Bob. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, once again, man, we thank you for for jumping on, man. Um, sharing your story. We, we're looking forward to helping you know progress the foundation however we can. So keep us in the loop for updates. Um, it's awesome to hear a story about Indiana that doesn't deal with basketball. So, you know, love to see where the program is, is, is changing and turning around and love to hear that you're connected to it. So for all the things you do, so we just want to give you your flowers once again and just say, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, blessed to be a part of your show. Uh, you guys are doing great things and stay blessed young men. Absolutely. Young king, young king. <laughs> there you go. And since you go everywhere, I can't wait to see you back in the city, man. Cause I see you whether it's Super Bowl or whether it's Pro Bowl, we see you everywhere, man. 
you gotta catch me at the next Super Bowl or Pro Bowl. There it is. There it is. <laughs> all right, man. Well, hey, that's a, that's our time. We want to thank our guests, you know, and obviously we want to thank you, the people, for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks to all of our sponsors. All right, so reach out, please, and let us know if you would like to become a sponsor of the show. For additional content, you can check us out in the locker room. We drop those every Tuesday. That's our short format shows where we talk about different topics in and around the game. Um, so you can check that out wherever you listen to podcasts. So please subscribe if you're listening to YouTube and or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And just remember, stay safe, practice gratitude, and know we're rooting for you. Screaming, all us blacks got us sports and entertainment until we even. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yo. Yo, yo. 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 Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Spat about two racks on handmade new racks. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. That's everybody from sports to conscious class to rap.